Hi, welcome. My name is Sichai and I'm a senior process safety engineer from Synergenology. Today we are going to talk about quantitative risk assessment or commonly known as QRA. In this video, we are going to introduce the basics of a QRA, including what is a QRA, why we perform a QRA, how to perform a QRA, and when we perform a QRA. So what is a QRA? It's a process which can be used to express risk of a hazardous event in the form of scalar value. By performing it for all potential hazardous events in a facility, we will be able to obtain a picture of the overall risk of a facility. This is very important because you won't be able to manage risk if you do not know what they are. Risk is a function of severity and probability. The severity refers to the magnitude of the consequence or impact of a hazardous event. And the probability is the chance of that hazardous event happening. So let's take a look at an example of going to work. The risk associated with a person going to work may include transportation accident, fire in the workplace, electrocution or tripping. So you may want to avoid this risk by choosing not to go to work. However, you may not be able to afford losing that income. This brings us to the discussion of the acceptance of risk. In many cases, risk cannot be completely minimized. There will always be a small chance of a hazardous event happening. And for this reason, we have to find a level of risk that we are comfortable with tolerating. And at the same time, accept that small probability that a hazardous event might still occur. Now let's talk about how a QRA is performed. And here is a flowchart of uh, performing a QRA. Before any quantification of risk can be done, first of all, we need to identify all potential hazards on a facility. This can be done as part of a workshop setting with the help of guide words. Given that in a facility, there could be a number of potential hazards, making it impractical to quantify all of them, we need to identify the major accident hazards. Taking the example of a hydrocarbon facility, among the many hazards that are present, fire due to loss of containment of a vessel may be one of the major hazards. For each identified major hazards, the associated severity and probability needs to be identified. The severity of a fire due to loss of containment may be measured in terms of fire thermal radiation effect area. On the other hand, the probability of occurrence may be estimated based on historical data. So once all that is done, the summation of all the risks in the facility can then be compared against an agreed upon risk tolerability criteria. If the calculated risk level is within that criteria, the facility is justified to be acceptable. If it is not, then mitigation measures may be raised to ensure that risks are tolerable. So why do we perform a QRA? A QRA is so common in the energy industry that sometimes we may have forgotten why we do it in the first place. So there are many benefits of quantifying risks in the facility. Firstly, QRA can be used as a benchmarking tool to compare risks among similar facilities. Performing risk assessments for different risk reduction options also allows us to weigh the improvement in terms of risk levels against their costs. The findings of a QRA allows us to identify key risk drivers or key risk areas which will lead to a more targeted approach for risk reduction. Not to mention, a QRA is often a compulsory requirement in certain industries or countries. QRA may be performed as part of a safety case or HSC case to demonstrate that the risk of operation is kept to as low as reasonably practicable. Finally, let's talk about when we perform a QRA. A QRA can be performed at any stage of your project from conceptual to feed to detailed design, even up to the operational stage of your project. It can also be applied to a vast scope of industries including oil and gas, chemical, power, nuclear, transportation. So this ends our sharing for today. 
I hope you find the information helpful. Thank you for joining me and see you in the next one.